<clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show, and um, here to talk about the uh, Pocono race, um, the Cup Series today. Eh, didn't really have any hopes this would be a good race. Uh, besides the restarts and strategy throughout most of the race until they started wrecking late and people could, were probably on the edge of fuel, then they were able to save fuel, so strategies out the window. But through stages one and two, the strategy was exciting to watch, and the restarts were pretty exciting. Three, four, five wide, bunch of wild blocks. But overall, eh, the race was pretty boring outside of that. And I just don't really look forward to them coming to Pocono. Just, I don't know, the race seems just boring there besides the strategy now and the restarts. And it feels like most races now where the best racing you're going to get is on restarts or strategy. And it seems really hard to pass besides the first lap of a run, especially up front. But, um, ultimately I want to bring up the winner. Uh, Ryan Blaney gets his second win of the season. Second win in the last five races. Uh, he ran really strong today. I didn't think he had the best... I don't even know who had the best car to be on. Because whenever you got in clean air, it was hard to pass. I mean, I thought Chase had the best car. Because he drove from 27th to 5th that one run. And he drove from the back after that BS penalty. Where it was, he was .16 over the limit. It was that stupid section seven where they had issues with it. Larson got penalized too. Gibby, uh, the Mexican. Chase still came back to get a top ten finish and took the points lead away, which good should have better than enough. But I'll take it after the last three weeks of finishing where uh, he shouldn't. Have. But yeah, right, as I want to mention, Ryan Blaney had a really good car, and once he got out front. Nobody was going to get to him. Hamlet's hard to close late, but it was too little too late. So, good win for Blaney. Um, racking up more playoff points. Got those two wins now. And they're running as good as uh, they run in the summer. Because during the summer, they really haven't run that great. But this summer, they're running really well. Um... Alex Bowman tried to run him down. He was gaining on him after the restart, but then fell back. But Alex Bowman got another top five slash a top five. So he won last week and then follows it up with a top five finish. He's not not a bunch of wins, but he's been consistently in the top ten all year. It's not like he's been a bum. He ran really well today. Had a fast car. Uh, the bunch of different hummers and goers throughout the field. Just strategy, strategy through the first two stages. Another thing I want to mention, um, Corey LaJoy. Another week, another Corey LaJoy incident. And normally I don't defend Kyle Busch, but yeah, he threw a block, but that, was, but that was uncalled for. Just turns them into half the field behind them. Took out other, took multiple cars out. Corey LaJoy, um, uh, he's it's just not that good. And I'm not saying Kyle Busch is any better. So don't take don't don't take that out of context. I'm not saying Kyle Busch is running much better right now. But Corey Joy's radio said you let him have it the first time, the second time he got what he deserved. I don't think um three I I I'd like to think those three to five other cars that got took out in that wreck, um would say otherwise. And this came from Ryan Sparks. Doesn't look matter if LaJoy said it or not. The fact that he was... There was praise for right hooking someone wrecking several other cars. That's just not a good look. And uh, he just needs a reality check. Wrecking, wrecking every week, it feels like, and takes about five, six cars out with him more like a stacking mistakes. It's ridiculous he's getting Rodney Childers. Next year, like, what has Corey Joy done? Like, nothing. Never won a race. And look, I'm not defending Kyle Busch. I'm not saying he's running any better right now. That 
it really wasn't his fault. I mean, yeah, he threw a block, but then he just turns him. I don't think anyone would have a problem with him if he just finished race for Spire in the 15th to 25th range is okay, but the rate proneness is just outrageous. He needs to be stacking burgers. Burger after burger after burger. See, I want to talk about that right quick, get that out of the way. If anybody watches this, I'm not saying Kyle Busch is any better than Corey LeJoy right now. Um, the fan, uh, okay, this was ridiculous. Um, I think there was like an hour, there was some severe weather I was going through. Uh, I think people were, the traffic was backed up for an hour because of it. Some people, a bunch of fans had to turn back because traffic was really bad getting there. And, uh, some, and people were even saying on Twitter, uh, turn back and it's just ridiculous. And NASCAR fans... They were in the replies, acting like sitting in track for three hours and missing half the race is normal. I don't care when you decide to go to the track, that's not normal and shouldn't happen. Three hours in traffic isn't normal going to a track. And people will be like, oh yeah, you should be there when the gates open. You shouldn't have to get to the track at 8 a.m to get to a race. That's another thing that I, I'll complain about. It's not a lot of people, people talk about on Twitter. Um, but yeah, let's just go over the race um, notes after the stages. I'll give the race 4 out of 10. I guess the restarts and strategy work signing. That's the only reason I have it at 4. Uh, but stages 1 and 2 uh, were Toyota dominated. Stage 1, Noah Gregson crashed, got loose, hit the wall, he was done for the day. Tricks went to Stage 1, obviously he had some strategy. Stage 2, Ross Chastain crashed, lost in, in Turn 3, hit the wall, and then Turn 1 hit the wall, and he was done for the day, which is big for the playoff cut line. Bubba Wallace gained a lot of points today, only minus 27 now. So, it's going to be big next few weeks. It's going to be a big next week at Indy before the uh, two-week Olympic break for Ross and uh, Bubba. And then Hamlin wins stage two. Stage three, Todd Gillen crashes. I don't know if it was a brake rotor. I think it was a brake rotor. And his day was done, which was unfortunate because Todd's been running really great as of late. And then we got a, that huge crash where Kyle Busch kind of blocked, but then Corey LaJoy just straight up dumps him. And he said he hooked himself. I mean, I don't know what he's doing, what he's even talking about. I mean... Yeah, I know Kyle Busch isn't running well as of late, and I'm not saying I'm not saying Kyle Busch hasn't had an incident throughout his career, but Corey LeJoy, he can't just hang on to that, to that excuse. Oh, I'm running these cars better than I should have anymore. He's wrecking every week and causing incidents. Like I don't know, he has a seat. He never has been that good. And the number nine, and when Chase, he didn't when he ran that car last year for Chase, he didn't sound like he run well. And then Kyle Busch and, and then Kyle Busch in his inter interview, you can tell he was pissed. More like Kyle, nah, Bush. He was like, nah. But I just don't know what Corey LeJoy was talking about. I mean, he's the only driver in the field who hasn't had wins at any of the main series of NASCAR, and it's just hard to defeat him when he constantly does things like this. It's an incidents week after week and gets rewarded with Rodney Childers. And you can disagree with me if, that, if that's fine. That's fine. I'm not going to argue. But that's just my opinion. But and just just when he said he got what he deserved, um, I don't think those other three to five cars uh, in that incident uh, would think that way. Maybe NASCAR needs to investigate some data on that seven. He should have known what he would do to the eight. Just saying. I only threw a crazy block. Oh yeah, let's put the let's ship him into oncoming traffic, and that radio charger just did him no favor at all. And he ended other people's races, and they need to have they need to have a a chat with him. I know that wasn't him saying that on the radio, but it's still the crew chief. 
Still doesn't help in favor of the team. Wasn't the best block. Because, I mean, he went down and blocked him, but then he just comes back and hooks him up into traffic. And it's easy to say, oh, don't block and you won't get hooked. That's at Pocono. If he doesn't block, then he's going to lose multiple spots. And how come there was other blocks and other drivers didn't get punted into traffic? Hmm. Then JHN and Zane Smith crashed. Unfortunately for Zane, had a best qualifying day for the weekend. I think it was in, that wreck was near the top 20. John Hearn and Chuck wrecked them both. Shocker. Another idiot that shouldn't be in the Cup Series. But, whatever. Uh, Gibby blew up. Yeah, he had that penalty, then he blew up. Just a disaster of a day. After he had a solid car. And then Ryan Blaney gets the lead on the restart, pulls away and gets the win. So, honestly, I did the right, like I said, a 4 out of 10. I didn't think it was that great. But yeah, Blaney gets the win, but um, let's go over the regular season points. Chase Elliott's leading the, we're leading the points again by 3 points. I think it's minus 3 to Larson, Reddick's minus 15. And they showed winning speed, which was really positive. And the penalty really, um, really ruined his chance at winning. He should have won. The finish doesn't represent how how insanely fast he was. But yeah, good to see Blaney back in victory lane. Uh, let's go over the finishing results. Pull him up here. So, Ryan Blaney gets the win, Denny Hamlin second, Alex Bowman third, William Byron fourth, Jose Gano fifth, Tyler Reddick sixth, Brad Kozlowski seventh, Martin Chooks Jr. eighth, Chase Elliott ninth, Bubba Wallace ran to the top ten out of his, he was struggling early on, but he battled through the day and got a top ten out of it. Chris Buescher eleventh, what, what the fuck is happening? Go to my stat sheet. Oh, there it is. Uh, wait, what the, what the fuck is happening? Oh, there it is. Uh, Chris Buescher, 11th, Christopher Bell, 12th, Kyle, Kyle Larson, 13th, Eric Jones, 14th, Chase Briscoe, 15th, Danny Suarez, 16th, Carson Hosevar, 17th, good top 20 for him, Austin Sandra, 18th, Corey LaJoy, 19th, and Josh Berry ends up top 20, A.J. Almendinger, 21st, Justin Haley, 22nd, Austin Dillon, 23rd, Michael McDowell, 24th, and this is what everybody else, 25th on down, actually, DN, at 25th to 37th, DNF, Daniel Hemmer, 25th, Cody Ware, 26th. Dean Affey finished better than Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs, 27th. Uh, John Aaron Nemechek, 20th. Zane Smith, 29th. Round top 30 is Ryan Priest. 31st, Harrison Burton. 32nd, Kyle Bush. 33rd, Ricky Snell's Jr. 34th, Todd Gillen. J.J. Ailey, 35th. Had some kind of mechanical issue, I think. Ross Chastain, 36th. Round the field, 37th. Last place is Noah Grayson. Your last place finisher and your last card winner. But yeah, just a bunch of chaos in that final stage with Corey LaJoy. Causing a big pile up, Gibby blowing up, and then some just a bunch of strategy throughout the race. And Corey Joy even in his interview said, Oh, it wasn't a boneheaded move. Yeah, you turned right on the left hand into a dude's left rear corner pound wrecked, what, six cars? Maybe even more. He just does it every week. And he's not even the best driver on his team anymore because they've actually got talented drivers now on that team. Uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts on this race. I'll leave a like, comment, subscribe for more. And until next time, have a lot. Peace.